So let's look at this particular reaction which we have over here and how he was able to transform this to that. In this particular process here, we're going to make this to be a bipyrimidine ligand attached to copper over here. And in here, we have copper 1 in this particular process in the presence of OTF over here. And then you have atmospheric oxygen, not as a double bond, but as splitted electrons over there. So the electrons have split it apart is so of them forming a pi bond over there. So what happens then is that copper over here donates one electron and then oxygen over here donates another electron to it to form a bond over here. So this process is actually an oxidation process so you call it oxidative addition ligand copper now going from copper 1 to copper 2 and then you have our oxygen attached to another oxygen with that one electron over there and on this other side we have the OTF over there however we don't need one copper ligand but two copper ligands in this particular process and what happens is that another copper with its ligand comes by over here OTF and then what happens is that it donates one electron to the oxygen and the oxygen donates its other radical electron to form a bond over there so what happens next is that we have copper 2 with each ligand over there and then you have your OTF over there and now you're going to form the oxygen with under oxygen with a form of a dative bond over there and then this oxygen there is attached to this other copper over there which has its own ligands attached to it over there however you also include dative bond to the other oxygen so this is an interesting complex that you generate over here and take note that this oxygen is also the copper over here is copper too so the next process that follows is the introductory to temple and temple which we know from our structure has the oxygen with the hydrogen over there and then you have the nitrogen attached over there to the oxygen and then you have this symmetrical ligand over here now what happens then is that this weak bond over here breaks off by generating one more electrons so one of this electron moves out and then what happens next is that this bond over here breaks off and one of the electron then fuses with that over there this other electron that was actually remaining here moves over to the oxygen over there and then what happens next is that this bond that was being clipped off over here one of the electron moves to the oxygen thereby forming an oxygen radical over there so what is being formed in this particular region over here is an oxygen with one electron attached to a nitrogen and then the ligand remaining part is being formed over there however on this other side over here what happens is that since this bond is being broken over here what happens is the formation of one part of your copper catalyst with its ligand over here with an oxygen radical over here and then your OTF over there which is this particular region over here and the other part which is this part over here is being formed here so a ligand attached to a copper 2 over here and then you have your OTF and over here you have your OH group attached over there so it's quite interesting how you're forming this and you also have to take note that let's assume that our R group 
this particular case is equal to this particular reagent which we had in our original focus reaction in our previous page so in here you have N2 you have your BR and you have your OH over there nice so what happens here is then by including this particular our group with this OH over here you have to note that between the R group and the OH group over here we have hydrogen atoms over here all these are high alpha protons and these alpha protons are really really critical in the oxidation process over here because you are reducing the degree of saturation so you are going to an unsaturated state overall so in this particular case what happens then is that this oxygen over here comes in contact with copper by donating its bonding long pairs to form a bonding pair over here and what happens next is that this bond here cleaves off and moves over to the oxygen however this oxygen with this long pair picks up this particular proton over there and the bonding that was here becomes a lone pair on this particular oxygen in this particular case so what results in this process is the formation of this complex with the copper 2 and then you have your oxygen being formed with your R group and take note of these alpha protons over here and then you have your OTF being formed over there now what happens next is that this reagent that was being formed over here then comes back over here and then extracts an alpha proton over here because these protons are really really acidic overall so nitrogen that over there so this electron then picks up a hydrogen proton and this then forms a bond over here and this particular bonding over here one of the electrons then reacts with this other electron that was being removed over here to form a double bond between the oxygen and the carbon over there and this one electron then moves back to copper thereby forming copper one in this particular case which is what you have over there on the other side we have our product which is the R group with a double bond between the carbon and oxygen and you have a hydrogen over there take note that this R group is actually this particular point over there but well, anyways thanks again for following me through this particular cycle of the copper oxidation process in the presence of air and please don't forget to hit the like button share and subscribe have a good day guys peace love you all and be smart